Christmas is a season of sharing, being jolly, and being thankful. As a people, we have gone through several storms, from Tropical Storm Erica, Hurricane Maria, and now a global pandemic that has left millions of people dead or in a state of despair. 2020 shall be a year we will never forget, but it shall also be a year that has caused us to reflect even more deeply. My hope is that these reflections will broaden our perspectives and lead to greater patriotism in the new year. I must first thank our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, for his outpouring of grace and mercies over our land. I thank him for our wise and visionary Prime Minister and my colleagues who are so committed to building a dynamic economy so that every family can have shelter, every table food, every child an opportunity to pursue his or her dreams, and every entrepreneur the opportunity to create wealth. I am thankful for my constituents in Galio, Sufre, Point Michel, and Scottsdale, who I have grown to love so fondly, even when we disagree, because I respect them, and I know that we want the same thing, a thriving constituency to be the tourism mecca of Dominica. I am particularly proud of my youth, who I believe are very talented and will be very successful if they remain focused and fall forward. So, amidst all the ham, turkey, sorrel juice, toys, and Christmas carols, I have begun my daily reflections as we come to a close of 2020. As I reflect on my constituency, I am so grateful that in spite of the pandemic, I was able to do tremendous work on the Bois Cutlet Public Road to facilitate the opening of our five-star Colibri Ridge Resort. Welcome families to their new homes and provide other forms of housing assistance. We kept everyone engaged under the NEP program and the constituents benefited from fiscal programs at DSS and Aid Bank. Work has commenced on the Sufre Health Center and Sufre Jetty, important projects for the health and security of all villages in St. Mark. The jetty is expected to bring vital economic activity in our area for fishing and tourism. Imagine moving from Point Michel to Scottshead on a water taxi, having various stops along the way to dine, socialize, or to purchase fish. We shall see the completion of the new Point Michel basketball court in the first quarter and commencement of our major communal housing project in 2021. I just highlighted a few projects which funding has already been secured. But 2021, by the grace of God, with all the projects in the pipeline, looks very promising for every village in my constituency, Galio, Scottsdale, Point Michel, and Sufre. So, I am excited and also really thankful for my development partners in the constituency. Jungle Bay, Katz, ResDM, and others who are working with me to transform our constituency. I am so grateful for their support. I am also thankful for the support of my management team, my labor youth organization, constituency office team, my NEP workers, especially those in the beautification programs. Father Peter, Father Mama, other pastors, my principals, teachers, and all constituents who really help make my work lighter. You are so amazing. As I reflect as Minister of Tourism, 2020 has clearly been one of the most 
challenging years for our sector as uncertainty still looms. But there is a key message for all of us that I want you to remember as we enter into 2021. Well stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 7 to 9. We have this light from God in our human bodies. This shows that the power is from God. It is not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side, but we still have room to move. We are often in much trouble, but we never give up. People make it hard for us, but we are not left alone. We are knocked down, but we are not destroyed. We have been slowly and carefully reopening the sector, one subsector at a time, as we adapt to our new normal. But I can assure you, this downtime gave us an excellent opportunity to conduct a well-needed review of our marketing and product development strategy. So in 2021, it is my hope that we will move the tourism sector from merely adapting to evolving and eventually thriving to ensure that Dominica stands tall in this industry and all livelihoods dependent on tourism earn an income again. It is my hope that more and more visitors will make nature's island their vacation destination of preference under the Safe in Nature program or their temporary home for a longer period under the Work in Nature program soon to be launched. The onus shall be on all tourism stakeholders to work closely with the Ministry and DDA as some aspects will require a change in how we do business. The Ministry of Tourism has been doing the groundwork for ensuring that successful tourism entities can benefit fully and play their part as engines for economic growth. Investment in human resources needed to manage tourism amidst a pandemic has been a priority. The Discover Dominica Authority has facilitated training for taxi drivers, tour guides, hoteliers, and even frontline workers. The latter was important to ensure that although protocols must be adhered to, a warm welcome is still synonymous with Dominica. Another priority has been certification, ensuring that all stakeholders sign on to a commitment of health and safety. Our infrastructure improvements have started with first ensuring that visitors can truly be safe in nature at all our sites. Our negotiations with airlines have borne tremendous fruit with several route options at competitive rates. With the Saka Fed campaign, we are looking to attract visitors from our sister islands. As we have managed the pandemic well in our region, let's explore our region more. Additionally, critical infrastructure improvements have been undertaken at the ports, including beautification, security enhancements, and retrofitting of the new COVID-19 screening facility. These seemingly small wins are setting the stage for a brighter 2021 for the sector. So, my hope is that tourism will continue along the path we have started at the beginning of 2020, prior to COVID-19. We all have our part to play. Tourism is everybody's business. So I urge you all to work with us as we ring in 2021 on a note of hope and not despair. With thanksgiving that we have made it through 2020, that we are alive and can play our part in maintaining Dominica as a gem beyond compare. We are also setting the foundation for successful 2021 for many micro, small, and medium businesses, those which drive the economy, 
and those just starting out. They have all faced challenges and the ministry has gotten a better understanding of most of them. My fellow Dominicans, I encourage you to patronize these local businesses. Give local Christmas gifts made with love, quality, and care. Let's make that commitment to give more locally made gifts for Christmas 2020. Design my Dominica Christmas box with gifts from the Wellness Association, an immune booster and detox package, an island tour, or a staycation. And for 2021, let's make a resolution to try a new local product every month and to include more local products in our kitchens, on our dresses, on our shelves, at hotels, restaurants, and in our offices. Building Dynamic Dominica is not only about being intentional about climate resilient infrastructure, but also being intentional about buying locally grown and produced goods and services in order to build a healthier and wealthier people. So, as I am about to have another slice of ham and await my delicious fruitcake from JJ, I want to say a Merry Merry Christmas to all my constituents, stakeholders, and my ministerial teams on a whole. Enjoy the season. Drive around our beautiful country. Spend time with your families. Share with a friend or stranger in need. But let's get ready for 2021. Sons and daughters responding to the thunder call as we construct our international airport and look forward to all the great projects the Lord has in store for us. Be safe, adhere to the protocols, and make time to give God some praise. From my heart to you, with thanksgiving, love, and joy, may God continue to bless our beautiful country and people. Let your light shine in 2021.